Everybody, today is a big day, or tonight is a big night, I should say. I am going into live with Josh David. He's in here already. All right, I'm just uh, going to send him an invite and get the exclusive interview started for you guys. Make sure. Oops. I'm dropping things. I was saging out the place because I let some flies in earlier. I like opened the door and some flies came in and I hate flies. So uh, I didn't want them in the in the vicinity for this Melody Mondays. Welcome the Radio Massive who's tuned in on RootsReggieHub.com. But a special interview tonight, Josh David. If you guys don't know who he is, you're about to find out. Judo Tribe. Joshua David Barrett in the house. Josh, how are you? Good job, bless for life. And you? Bless up. I'm feeling so happy tonight to be reasoning with you Hi. about your music, Judah Tribe, and your movements globally. You know, you're a Grammy nominee, producer, bassist. You know, you have so many talents, singer, songwriter. You wear many hats. Um, people might not know like how much you really do, uh, how busy you truly are, and how much artists you've worked with um, in the past. You know, Nas, Q-Tip, uh, just to name a few. The Whalers, huge, uh, with touring and everything else. Um, it's such a blessing to talk to you, and you have so much knowledge that I can soak up. I'm like a sponge tonight in your presence. And uh, bless it, love. Thanks for having me, you know. Iron sharpened iron. That's the part. Bless it, love. Thank yes. you, thank you. For anybody, like, I kind of gave you a, a, a decent intro, hopefully. <laughs> a, a blessed yes. intro. But for anyone who's tuned in on the radio, Twitter, Facebook, wherever they're joining us, tune in app. And not everyone's here on the gram. We have a lot of radio listeners tuned in around the world as well. So for anyone that, you know, doesn't know you, has never seen you before, or heard your music in your own words, uh, tell them who you are. Well, my name is Toby ja, Joshua David Barrett. And um, I and I cite myself as a voice crying in the wilderness, you know? Um, I was blessed to grow up in a generation that really held on to um, the roots that our ancestors, our elders passed on and at a crucial time, like when I graduated high school, I, I'm 41, no secret, but I graduated 1999 from high school. So we were like at a turning point and I was blessed to be able to carry the essence of what we were given, what the elders passed onto this new age, you know, cause that was the thing, new age theory and new age this. So me as a man is a man where love the heritage that Ja gave to me, especially being born an African ascendant, an Ethiopian in this time, you know, just to be able to bring it all forward from creation to where we were all one, you know, irrespective of color, but we were all one people, one landmass, everything was one. So as a voice crying in the wilderness, bringing it to this time, saying, make we reunite at, at that point of oneness again. Mm -hmm. I love that, reuniting in oneness. Yes. And your lineage, you have indigenous, Jamaican, Ethiopian, like you have such strong roots 
And I love, you know, to talk about foundation and roots because I feel that we are our ancestors. Yes. I'm a true believer in honoring your ancestors and praising them um, in everything they do. Because I do feel like they still work for us and through us. Very much. Um, yeah, right? So that is some power on top of power, if you're able to harness that. So tell me, tell me about your childhood growing up. What was that like for you? Um, I grew up in a um, cult religious and cultural um, background. You know, my grandfather was a preacher and my uncle them aunties and ministers, you know, and like um, also singers. They grew up singing in the choirs and stuff. My, my chorus teacher, um, Miss Rung, Meredith Rung, God bless her, if you're listening, thank you. But um, she taught my mother and my aunties and she was my high school teacher, you know? Um, and also like long before I start growing locks, I was, used to go to the barbershop every Thursday, every Friday, not Saturday, because you would never get out. But um, Tom's Tonsorio, if you know um, Deaf Comedy Jam, uh, Bob Sumner, he's from my hometown, Roselle, New Jersey, New Jerusalem, as we say, Linden, New Jerusalem. But his father's shop was like a, a hub, you know, and there was a club next to there that I didn't go to years later. Um, but in this barbershop, you had like, you know, Bill Bellamy is from there too. I remember seeing his picture in the barbershop and, you know, me and my cousin them. But the key thing was there was jazz music and some kind of of our R&B, of our music playing um, in the barbershop every time. And not to mention my uncle, my uncle Danny, who was married to my aunt Debbie. My uncle Danny was in a group called Bingo with, uh, Brother Tom, and um, I believe the son Reggie too, they were in a group called Bingo. It has some hits back in the day. They were like our, our local heroes. They were like the earthman and fire, you know, of our, of New Jerusalem in them time, you know. Yeah. That plus church and like musically, the, the musicians that I grew up with in church, they gave me a great heritage, you know. Um, I was blessed to grow up around um, musicians who are on the cutting edge of the gospel world. And again, I'm from Union County, New Jerusalem, uh, Roselle, which is the same county as uh, Plainfield. So I got to meet um, extensions of P-Funk later, meeting like members of P-Funk and P musicians that play with Prince and musician, uh, my having brother that played with Faith Evans and all these kinds of people. So these were the ones who kind of grew my, you know, and they always taught me like a uh, crucial lesson, no matter how good you are, there's always somebody that can play circles around you, you know? And as a bass player coming up, especially, you know, I used to love all the, I loved all the bass players, Marcus Miller, Jocko, Pastorius, Victor Wooten, Mac Garrison, you know? Um, but it's like, they taught me one thing, you have to love the bottom, you have to love the, the root. And so that kind of stayed with me as a musician, as a bass player, as a guitarist, as a songwriter, as a producer, you know, and uh, as a producer, I would say like, another part of being, growing up in my house, we learned a, a thing called rebel music with my mother, Jaris, her soul. She went home during this um, pandemic of quarantine and um, but she went to be with her sister, my auntie, my aunt Sandy and my mother. They were like the rebels. My mother gave me my first jar of herb. I won't tell you my age. But like she and my auntie, um, they used to listen to Michael Jackson every day. Like I didn't, I thought they were going to tear him apart. Like you both can't have him. I didn't, you know, it was like, so what are you going to do? They love Michael Jackson. And this is what I grew up like. I born 81. So. You had Off the Wall just come out, and you had Thriller. So MTV Bus 1981, that was like my introduction to the world. It's like um, Beat It, Billie Jean, Uptown Girl, 
Cindy Lauper, um, you know, the boss, um, Bruce Springsteen, who's also from New Jerusalem, you know, all of them kind of sounds I was growing up to hear. So fast forward to like, my mother also with that gave me a love for um, our Jamaican side because that part of me is on her side, but she grew me up listening to a song called My Boy Lollipop. She used to sing that to me. And oh, nice. up on the cousin, she make us sing it. So, jello, mommy. <laughs> um, sorry that she lost, you know, or she transitioned, I should say, through the pandemic. You know, a lot of people lost loved ones, and I'm so sorry that affected you oh, as please. well. Um, such a such a huge thing, especially a, a matriarch, a mother, you know, such a beacon in your life. Yeah. Um, so yes, my heart goes out to you. Um, your your childhood though, full of music, uh, growing up, you had such these influences um, through your mother and through your circle, your environment. Uh, so, uh, you know, the love clearly grew early and from a young age. So that is a blessing because uh, we've been able to have the gift that you are and that you give in the world in, um, you know, you sharing your music and your talent with us. Tell me about Judah Tribe, tell me more. Uh, we're gonna talk about New Day Dawning. Uh, tell me how you, you know, put this all together. How did this form? Judah Tribe is the will of the Father. Like, my aspiration was different because I was like, Jocko's looking at him like he wanted to be the world's greatest bass player. And I was like, well, I can do that now. You know, but it was like when I was, I was playing with a band at the time, um, Kevin Jones in 10th World. Kevin Jones was the percussionist for the Isley Brothers and Whitney Houston. And he's still touring with his band today. But like these, the, the collaboration of musicians that I was with at that time when Judah Tribe formed, they like, you know, were a big part of it. But I remember being in, um, call it Fatlanta, Hotlanta, you know, for the um, African Arts Festival. Yeah. And I I was a young locksman on time and, you know, walking up the street and seeing some Rastaman greetings and blessed love and, you know, peace and blessings. I said, wow, I wish people in church greet each other like that, you know, cause I grew up in church. But I started kind of realizing there were some flaws in the doctrine, you know, we were still down pressed people and I had to worship an image of God that did not reflect my own identity. So going into Atlanta, seeing that and seeing lots of people that were proud, I remember going home, this was 2004, I went home from that tour. And um, I remember like, uh, I started working at Guitar Center downtime in the, in the drum department. And I was like, really, really like wanting to know God because I said, how can I believe in the Bible if what I was seeing is like there's untruth. So I remember working in Guitar Center one day and a youth come in with a t-shirt, simply said, listen to Bob Marley. I said, all right, I go go home and I go listen to my Bob Marley album. Wow, yes. You know, and I, I listen, only reggae music dumb time I know is ska, you know, Jamaica ska, Millie Smalls and Jaresta. So she transitioned the same year as mommy. And um, uh, Bob Marley and the Whalers and Dennis Brown at the time. So I was like, let me go home. And I went and listened to, and I'm like, wait a minute. These brethren are saying the same thing. Mm. Coming from a biblical perspective, but they're talking the same language. They speak, the, you know, they have the same questions. And, under, you know, it's like leading toward the same thing. So at the time, my brethren, who I was roommates with, um, Chris Scholar, a musician on the scene where you must know, Marlon Bonds, um, Cornell Fields. Um, we were, Jameo Brown, we were reasoning and, but I remember like they taught me the African presence in the Bible, which I didn't, I wasn't aware of. So when they gave me that love for the Bible now, and I start listening to Rasta message, it's like, literally like, upon coming home from that trip and realizing this stuff, songs started coming to me. 
you know, lyrics and message. I remember listening to Redemption song and it was like only chords I knew how to play on guitar at the time was G major and E minor. Cause a, 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 a virgin of mine who was a pastor of a kid's church in Jersey city, uh, pastor Trevor, Trevor Rubin taught me how to play G major and E minor. So being, I work at guitar center, I got the book and I said, I'm gonna go learn it redemption song. And that's G major. Whoa. I already know two chords. So I pick it apart and learn redemption song. And, you know, I was, I know I have uh, um, a gift to sing, but I stopped singing because I had a, um, uh, a moment at my sister's wedding. She asked me to sing a song and I was like, just a knucklehead about it. I didn't learn it. I wasn't a singer. And I'm like, you know, when, when it was like, hit it. I had to make up the whole song. I improvised the whole song. Like I, the song that I sang was not what she asked. And really? But did it turn out okay? Like I know you were like clearly <laughs> affected by it, but what did it turn out? Like did people clap? Like was it? Yeah, they clap, but you know, yeah. I, they'll, they'll clap you right to your seat. Like yeah, mm, baby, you know. But so like <laughs> for me to, I was like okay. I had to get back courage to sing. So I said, I'm going to try a sing redemption song. So I started out and played it. And, you know, I called my sister and she's a vocalist. So I'm working, to, we work together with Q-Tip, son Singleton. I called her, I said, son, listen to this and tell me if it sound all right, you know? And I played a fear and she said, yeah, man, you have a vibe, you know, and started working with it. That is 2004, 2005, Judah Tribe did our first show performance in Newark, New Jersey, New Jeruz, you know, and started writing, taking these songs that came to me in them time period and writing. And through that process, you know, I met other musicians, Eric Toussaint, who was um, the co-band leader, was leading a band, Rhythm Nation. We joined forces together. And one by one, all musicians started coming in, you know, over time. It was just like, it, it was really you know, it became a movement. I remember when I asked the Most High, I said, what do you want me to call this thing? I remember I said, Jesus chose 12 disciples in Ray Tete. So I said, just send me who you want me to work with and, and what shall we call this thing? And I said, Judah tribe, you know? It, and what it means, show, show you that Rasta liberty where I was learning and understanding my Ethiopian identity and heritage to our modern day emperor from the house of King David, Emperor Ali Selassie the yeah. first. So, so that kind, that knowledge just um, kind of, it started growing in we, and amongst the community I was with in Brooklyn, cause at that time I was living in Brooklyn. So, you know, Brooklyn is a hub of African Caribbean culture. And so it was like, there we did get to, you know, sharpen each other musically and you know, we haven't stopped since. I love that. I love that. That's such a good story, um, how it's kind of come together as a collective, mm -hmm. um, a community. And it just seems like it was almost ordained or divine or, you know, some sort of intervention of sorts. Um, yeah. So that's, that's a that, that's definitely an interesting story. And for I see some questions coming in on the chat. I will give a chance for questions from you guys. I see a couple also on Twitter. I will get to questions at the end, so closer to the end of the interview. So if you guys want to use a little question box on the little right hand side of your screen at the very bottom, the little question mark there, you can put your questions there, and I will definitely get um, some of the questions asked, if not all the questions for Josh because I know you guys are asking about his Nati and some other things I see, but the chat moves so fast with people popping in. Um, you guys, it's best for me to see them, for you guys to put them in the little question box and I will get to them. All right. Um, some of my favorite songs from New Day Dawnin, which is the debut album. Um, definitely Chase the Babylon, uh, Fire Half a Bun, Judgment. Mm -hmm. Um, I picked a few, just a few. It was hard to choose, uh, you know, three. I had to Psalms twenty three, dedicated to your to your grandfather. Tell me, tell me about Psalm twenty three. Well, and what, what kind of role did your grandfather play in your life? Maybe a fond memory of him or something like that. Then 
that song, um, I had to live a kid to him because he's the one who taught me the 23rd Psalm. My grandfather, um, Joseph Elias Barrett, um, he was born 1898, six years from his majesty. And when I was, you know, I remember being um, three and four, he would sit me down and make me learn 23rd Psalm, memorize it, you know, so... That was my um, that was my heritage. It's like he he instilled that into me from young. So I said, you know, if if this sound will go reverberate for all you know, forever and ever, I wanted it to be known that he, he taught me this. You know, I love that. That's the patriarch, the progenitor. I like to call it. it true of, of the family. <laughs> um, definitely. So. That's a great honor to him. I do love that. My my dad's favorite um, psalm is Psalms 23. So nice. that, that touched me. He always mentions it all the time. Okay. Um, so shout out to my dad as well. Yeah. <laughs> Usually he's here listening, but uh, he's not here tonight. So um, also sometimes love. Uh, I, got, so I got my love earrings on for that one. Love. <laughs> Sometimes love, I love that track as well. Yeah, it makes you do the strangest things, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, it do. It does. Um, yeah, there's so many good tracks. If you guys haven't heard New Day Dawning as of yet, uh, you can stream it. You can listen to it on rootsreggaehub.com, of course. And you can also buy it on all major platforms. You guys have to support the thing, download it, do what you can to support the artist. And the, to help them do what they love to do, of course. And of course, because the music is amazing. It's, it put me in a whole mood. Um, Josh, tell me about your inspirations. You know, what inspired the album and, and maybe maybe even the tracks I mentioned. I know I, I, know I mentioned a lot. So <laughs> um, tell me what inspired the project maybe and the production team. I have to, again, a big up the general Eric Toussaint who is, um, He's the MD for Sundub at present. Cause we we drew the tribe, but we all work music. So you know, um, he wrote that song when I when I met Brother Eric in Brooklyn in 2005. He was with his band Rhythm Nation, and they performed this song "Chase the Babylon." And when I first heard it, I was like, "Yo, that's an anthem," you know. So when we united forces, I was like, "That's gotta go on the album," you know, and um. We had like some like song like sometimes love, you know. Dumb song was written when my firstborn uh, was born, you know, and with being with his mother and relationship and you know kind of experience, you kind of chronicle your experience as a as a musician. And you know, I was working with artist uh, Motown artist Joy Dinalani at the time who I was introduced to by Chris Scholar who had um, produced for her husband, Max Herre. He put me on and um, I performed Sometimes Love for her and she loved it. And she was like, you know, I like your song, but I'm not gonna say said I once was young, now I'm getting older. So she was like, I gotta write her version to his version and um, You'll see, like, uh, before she joined Motown, she was on Nisola, which was their independent label. But um, the album um, Born and Raised uh, was that song. That album included Sometimes Love, which my, which was my first commercial release. So big up Joy, Dinalani, and Max, you know, Chris Scholar, big up. And, um, yeah, those songs kind of came about judgment. I have to say, like... Judgment is a song that unfortunately has to be sung. And there's some of these songs that I wish we didn't have to sing, but Brother Jalen Walker, Sean Bell, uh, Brianna Taylor, who hasn't received any just due. There's yeah, so female, the female voice on the song is. Uh, that sister is um, Sister Erica. She sounds so close to Lauren Hill on the track. I was listening, I was like, 
she's getting the voice sounds so close to Lauren Hill. I was like, she did a great job. Big up to her as well. Big up. I and, wanna... Yeah. And all the names. Sorry to interrupt you with no. all the names. Brianna Taylor. Yes, continue. It's it's very yeah. sad. Yes, yes. Um, and that sound effect that you're hearing that that's from the same county. I, I believe Essex County is where Lauren come from. Is where Sister Erica come from. So that again, that New Jeru's hub, you know. Um, but we wrote that song in tribute to Sean Bell because at the time, Sean's father-in-law, we were in a band together with Rhythm Nation and Judah Tribe. We were, you know, one band essentially. And the the very sad thing is, like, I met Sean Bell the night before he got killed. We were in studio um, at his fa his father-in-law's house with his wife, uh, Nicole, and the two princess, little girls, princess, I mean, babies at the time. And, you know, they came in off the road and heard what we were doing, and he peeked in and was like, yeah, well, I like the vibes, and, you know, they went downstairs. And I remember after that session, you know, we were invited to come to hang with him. I, you know, he's like, you know, Sean invited us to the bachelor party, but we had a gig. And, like, we heard about it because a friend of mine got killed around the corner that I went to school with. So I was at that Friday listening to Johnny was a good man. And then that Saturday I hear her say, uh, Sean Bell get killed. I'm watching the news, but I'm, you know, like it, they, they didn't show less at the time, but when it come to, we say that was less. I must Sunday, the next day, one of my bandmates at the time called me and said, that was, you know, that was less son-in-law. You know, and immediately when we heard that, we write judgment, Kawa said, you know, I could deal with this two ways. We could, you know, bust gun, or we can enlighten minds to the struggle. And when we say struggle, it is a struggle, but we want to deal with it peacefully. We hope to bring it to a peaceful resolve. That's what we're hoping for. But when we say judgment, that means say. Uh, God is a God of love and he's a God of wrath too. Mm -hmm. So when we write the song Judgment, it will say fire for blaze in a Babylon because as you see, they have not stopped killing our African children. Mm -hmm. from, I mean, not, I'm not saying babies alone, but African people in this country and around the world, if you look online, you see the other day, they're still enslaving Africans in, I believe it's Spain, you can go on Instagram and, and look it up in, the, in the, the, the Middle East, which is north, farther northeast Africa. They're still enslaving Africans. So, yeah. you know, these things, we write judgment as a cry, outcry to that, to bring awareness and that we are here to fight a struggle. And we know that we shall win, as His Majesty said, the victory of good over evil. Yes. A lot of people aren't aware of the modern day slave trade and organ organ harvesting that they're doing. Um, yeah. They are literally taking people's, I, can I say that? Are they gonna take this down? I, I, hey. I've been, <laughs> Josh, they are, I've had Instagram come for me in the last two weeks. So I got, <laughs> I'm just trying to, I hate to laugh, but it's, it's sad. Um, yeah, it's, Instagram's been, yeah i just anyway what you're saying is very true most people aren't aware of the horror that is happening around the world um in libya and the yeah the very real modern day slave trade that's happened i mean cnn i think cnn broke the story like years ago and i did organize a protest here in toronto at the time to tell you mm -hmm. the truth and not very many people there was other protests going on around the around the same time i forget what they were about but it's like because we're here in canada people didn't find it to be our problem you know mm -hmm. but for me as an african descendant you know as a jamaican as a diaspora a member of the diaspora i felt drawn to to the issue and i just felt like yeah, so it was just, it's still devastating. It's still happening. So, 
it's just something that I feel doesn't get very much attention. And thank you for speaking of this. This song is so current. It's so relevant to the matters at hand of what our people are suffering and going through around the world and prosecution in different places, not just in one place, but global warfare is what I'm talking about. Sure. Um, I do want to play Judgment. I can't play up the tracks in full here on Instagram because they will come for me. Um, I've been trying to play like under a minute, to be honest, guys. But I have curated a list of, um, well, pretty much your album, <laughs> um, which I will be playing for everybody right after. I found some other songs, too, um, as well. Just a few other songs as well that I want to play. And yeah, I want I want you guys to tune in after as well. If you're here on Instagram joining me, you can tune in after this Instagram live and listen to the full album if you haven't already. And if you're here on the radio, you got to keep it locked here on rootsreggyhub.com to listen to the full tracks out in full because right now we're just reasoning for the next hour and I'll be playing out all the music in full after we reason for you guys to be able to full joy the music because it is a vibe judgment is one of the more serious tunes and it is definitely necessary um yeah it's funny how music is is ageless mm. See, you know that, Josh? i do and it's very simple as the bible said there's nothing new under the sun you know mm. and music like We've been fighting, if we really check history, we've been fighting the same struggle. And we've been getting conquered by the same methods for so long that I'm hoping, like we're here to just pass the torch, make sure another generation knows what time it is so that we can get this thing right. Yes, it's so mm -hmm. true. Um, it's all about passing the torch because uh, when, the, when, when the war is not won, you know, that's that's essentially what you're doing is passing the torch on for the next generation to continue uh, to burn fire in a bubble run. Straight. Yeah, straight. Fire on so Keep it locked here on the Roots Reggae Hub. This is Judgment, Judah Tribe. I gotta let you guys hear it too here on Instagram. <laughs> I'll pull it up for y'all. Hello. Officer Bill is about calling. We got three suspicious black men in that area. Check one. <laughs> Keep it locked here on the Roots Reggae Hub after the reasoning with Josh to hear all the music from New Day Dawning. So keep it locked here on RootsReggaeHub.com. Big up the radio listeners. Uh, if you want to take in the video portion of this, uh, you're going to have to find us on Instagram, on Insta Live, at Roots Reggae Hub, at Josh David 424. 
Yeah. <laughs> you gotta go follow him and you can take in the live of what's happening right now. I know some of you are listening just to the audio portion of this interview. Bless up you guys wherever you may be in the world. And thank you, Instagram fam, for joining us tonight as well. Love you all. If you have any questions, if you're just joining us, I am saging because there's a fly hair. I'm not just some weird person who stages during interview. I let a fly in earlier when I was cooking and I opened the door and I hate flies. So that's why I'm saging. I don't normally stage during interviews. Hey, you know, that could be spy tech. They make machine mosquitoes now. So when you have meetings and things, you see a fly, you have to wonder if it's really a fly, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna get one of those electrical like ones that they like you know they zap them but I'm dying. yeah I'm in the middle of moving anyway so I'm like I better not order anything from Amazon any right now so I'm just like I'm packing and I'm just like I'm just like the, the fly will go on its own you know yeah. so bless up everybody that's joining us if you're just joining us I have Josh here tonight big heart and big character but so humble so humble i love that i love that about you tell me your musical mission has it changed i mean you've worked with so many people Nas, like, like so many people and done so much already so what is your personal musical mission moving forward to get all of this in where it's in my head and in my heart out to the world you know I just hope to be a voice of reason and a voice of inspiration. Um, that is why me feel that me is put here on earth, you know, to leave a vibration, a positive vibration, you know, and that can take any form musically, you know, cause I, I'm of the hip hop generation. So I respect a one's right to tell their story, but I also, am, I want to be a voice as an anchor from the past to the present to say, let's not lose our roots. Let's not lose our heritage. Let's not lose our culture. Because what made us who we are, what kept us here for millions and millions of years, I will keep us for millions and millions of years more. So we must love our creator, love our neighbor as ourselves. you know? Yes. I love that. Yes, love thy neighbors as you would love. Want someone to love yourself. Um, yeah, treat others how you want to be treated. It's such an easy, should be such an easy concept, you would think, for people to understand. Um, there would be a lot less uh, war in the world. And that's why I love the album so much. You talk about, you know, this unity, this liberty, respect, you know, for mm. each other love and it just has everything in one um, mm, that you yeah everything that, that you would need in one from an album uh, tell me about the lyrics uh, you know I know it's it's a collaboration but what inspires the messages in your music I can tell you very simple one the Holy Bible Two, the words of the emperor. And three, the five o'clock news. <laughs> See? Wow. Yes. Very simple. And, you know, the fourth thing would be life experience. Because we put all of those things together and we are still telling our story. But when it comes to the message, like when I look for tell a story i ask the most high what he wanted me to say and he'll bring me to you know god talked to me in parables so we understand he'll paint a picture so the, the picture that he paints or the melody where me here is what the item here i just pass in it as a conduit yes you know? but the message is eternal like that's what bob marley mean when you say if you listen carefully you will hear because you mentioned something when we talk about our ancestors is not so deep. If you understand scientifically what DNA is, then you understand that we've all been here before who are blessed to be here today. So this message that when you hear it, you say, amen. You say true word. You say, yes, I. It's because that message is eternal and it, it, it ring out it, you know, your DNA and make you say a uh, true. Mm -hmm. you know? That's so true. I mean, you share 
identical DNA strands with your cousins and your aunties and your uncles. And it comes down to, funny enough, science <laughs> and biology. Uh, it's, it's an understanding. Um, some people think, you know, spirituality or the cosmos and science aren't connected, but they're deeply ingrained. It's yes. Good. Um, and we are essentially reflections of or <laughs> you know what we see as above so below indeed right. indeed that is rasta philosophy where we come to understand and if you really check it man is a universe and when we say man mankind male and female yeah. we take father god and mother god to make we sin but within the dna of man you have all of the all of the elements upon earth air earth water fire but you have a fifth element, which I didn't know this. I learned this from the History Channel, which even you see um, upon Babylon Media, the truth get true. But I'm sure you say the fifth element of man does not come from earth, which is the breath of life, that, elect that electric shock, seeing that give man life. That don't come from here. So essentially, we are, we are the aliens where we build the pyramids. We are the yeah. people that are here now, we still talk in the same talk. That's why all over the world, in Arizona, in the East Coast, in South America, you see the spacecraft. Enough people are sight the scout craft, the spacecraft, because mm -hmm. them is here to remind us that although we have all this cellular Jetsons and Star Trek technology, we don't know everything and that our existence is greater than our present time. We have a, we have a root and heritage, but there will come a time when we'll come in the fullness of that knowledge. I will say through the third eye, you know? Yes. Uh, what would it be like to forward into the knowledge of uh, what our ancestors clearly knew to be able mm -hmm. to build these pyramids in alignment with Orion, you mm -hmm. know, with the formations in the sky. These pyramids <laughs> are like the Pyramid of Giza, like it's literally built directly in the formation of the stars like people it's so deep you know when you study ancient africa and ancient history um and how they can't still can't figure it out or rebuild these structures today it's mind, it's mind-blowing and they're truly older than what they say they are as well yeah. truly older than what they say they are but that's a whole another topic josh <laughs> i can get i can get on about you know um, ancient Real Africa, Nubia, and Kemet, and go Ethiopia, <laughs> and all of it, and get it dive deep. I was lucky enough to have a stepfather who also taught me these things mm. before, before he passed last year. Amidge. Uh, yes, he was a great man. I'm wearing a necklace in honor to him. Darest and so Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> Tell me, tell me, well, I guess we talked about your spirituality. That, that kind of was my next topic, spirituality. But we already went deep into that, guys. What do you think? I think we did. Haley Selassie, big up the, big up the emperor and empress Menen. Yes. Uh, you know, such great examples, mm. you know, living examples as well for us. Yes. Um, I went to the Bob Marley One Love Experience this week. You, you probably saw that, right? I caught a clip of it. I, a I little was... bit? Yeah. Well, I haven't shared. I got. I took like pictures of everything. Every single thing I saw. I took pictures and Sadella Marley was there and her son. And it was such a great experience. But just to see never before seen footage and stuff like that. But wow. Haley Selassie, what does it mean, your spirituality and, and having this almost like a, you know, a messiah to some. Like, what does he represent in your life? And how has your spiritual journey evolved or changed like from where you started and where you are now? Because you said you were, your family was religious. So mm -hmm. let me know what that journey was like for you. And it's still going on going, obviously. All right. Well, I got to take you into the recesses of time and bring you current. You see... I was when last I was in Jamaica, I bought this jacket from the Bob Marley store. And Bob is Bob, you know. I love Bob because Bob is Bob is like our folk hero. But he, you know, he was like he was in our time. But I bought this jacket because it made me feel like you know, like like a 
like Rastaman, you know, I grew up seeing uh, Superman and, and Spider-Man and Batman. So like, and you know, for the princesses, you know, he, you know, yeah, She-Ra and then like, yeah, He-Man and then Wonder Woman, like you grow up for, for look to heroes, right? So when I, as a spiritual man, grow up and learn to appreciate God, who, who always, who is the, who is good and is the champion of good in Christ, which is in us, then I start realize, uh, okay, there's a lot more reality to this thing than what they're telling me. And the first thing, I'm going to share a little thing with you. You see, when you look on Superman, the golden rock that killed him come, they found it in Ethiopia in Addis Abeba, if you look at Superman. And if you look at the original story, his first uh, mission was bringing um, the Japanese emperor and Hitler to the United Nations. But there's only one person in history do that. And that's Emperor Haile Selassie I. So when you really look on it and you, you, you start realize, say, okay, the, he's, a, he's wearing a red cape. And if you put an S in the middle of his chest, it's really Selassie. So wow. I realize, say, God real, you know? And like my love for his majesty, for realize, say, that God from Ethiopia traveled the world and fight on behalf of his people, his children's rights, and fought for our lives and came to Babylon, America, where I was born in the diaspora, and said that I am not only king of Africa, but I am king of all the Negroes of the world, including those of the United States. See? Like when you look upon the movie and Superman fly to Russia and fly to this town, there's only one man in history to do that and wear a cape. That is Emperor Haile Selassie I. So when it comes to like, there's nobody greater to me than Haile Selassie I. Because like you said, he is our, our protocol and our prototype. And I quote him with, with, with Abbott, Abbott Shubaya from the church Haile Selassie I. His majesty is our protocol and our prototype. So everything, what it means to me as an African ascendant in this time, I can look to and study the example of Emperor Haile Selassie I, Empress Menen, how he, gov how he lives family life, how he governs not just, um, he governs an empire. And not only that, he is called the father of Africa because the African nations that surrounded him look to him also for their liberation. So for me, like this, this is what makes me better myself because we read, we have the Bible, the Bible's been here with us, but now we can't say God invisible and is a, we are, are waiting for the Jesus that you see, uh, the, the, the Eurocentric Jesus to come save me. I don't have to wait for that anymore. I can be and live as a royal, a royal heir to a real dynasty to a real government, the Lion of Judah flag, that me fly, the green, gold, and red. I born in America as a national, and I have Jamaican heritage, I have European heritage, mm -hmm. but my essence, who I come from, is an Ethiopian. Yes. So that give me identity. And in Ethiopia, we say, as Rasta, we say, humanity is pleading one God for us all. So. Yes, it's black pride, but it's also universal identity we're calling for because it's a one God for us all. There's only one man that stand up to fascism, Mussolini, Nazism, Hitler in World War II. There's only one man. Him is the moral God of the ages and history proved that. So that is a universal cry for everyone. I tell all the world leaders, if, if you're listening, if you want to govern your country, your nation, then study Emperor Haile Selassie the first life, his words, his government, mm -hmm. and you will get to peace on earth. I promise you that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know you see the Queen of England bow down on her knees. Uh, you know, people need to recognize what you know what he represented and what he still represents, and it's such a huge thing.
to be able to recognize the <laughs> the this the the royalty, the lineage, uh, how far back it really truly goes, <laughs> mm. you know, and again, to the ancestors that we mentioned in the beginning. Um, so whether you recognize him as your Messiah or your, you know, whatever, it's, it doesn't, that, that in itself is besides the point to an extent. It's a, more about what he represents, his words, his teachings, what he stood for and what he still stands for and will forever stand for. So mm -hmm. praises, praises for all of that. I'm so grateful and thankful for Haley Selassie Rastafari. and Empress Benin, Rastafari, Ja, Rastafari. Rastafari. <laughs> Give thanks for real. Um, yes. Uh, such a huge thing. Thank you for sharing that in your wisdom. We have a question from Twitter. I'm going to try to get to the, some of the questions. Sure. Um, a lock journey question. Most people ask this when it comes to people with locks, but you have more of a free form. How did you start your locks? When did you start your locks? And what do you do to maintain your locks, Josh? This is from Kathy110 or Kathy110, sorry. Kathy. Happy wants to know about your lock maintenance and your journey. Well, I started locks when I was 17, and it was an um, African sister from a church, uh, Yatunde, um, put on locks for me. And then after that, you know, maintenance, like you said, my, you know, my family, them, them religious, them is not Rasta, them grew up. Pentecostal and them is very, you know, traditional. So my cousin, she's a beautician. Uh, my cousin, Michelle Johnson, she have a shop now. Big up, big up. But she used to, you know, come in. She used to make me come in our shop and say, no, you can't go out looking any kind of way. You have to twist up and nice and neat and her. Uh. So I said, I go there. I said, me is a man. I'm not going to sit up in this chair. And no, no, no. I said, make, make, make me just sit here and go so. You know, and, you know, use liquor. At that time, we used to use uh, Indian hemp. Uh, when we was in college, that was, you know, the thing. Or, you know, shea butter. But locks maintenance. One thing I, I learned is, like, you want to make your, your locks breathe, your head breathe. So, like, you wash them regular. Like, when you wash your locks, we is, you know, me is a numbers man. So everything in a, is a numbers thing in a sense you know so we wash we notch three times you know and we use oil like uh coconut oil olive oil um black castor oil you know them kind of thing there or you could have washed it with aloe vera too and these things just keep your keep your 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 antenna flexible is is how we say it. just keep mm, it flexible. your antenna yes they truly are <laughs> i do believe that yeah. And ten eye to the most high, you know, for that straight. See the flag is past you guys. <laughs> I got a sage. I got a sage. Bye. <laughs> and ten eye to the most high. Big up, Cappy, for that question. I love that question. You have an Instagram question too. What Aladdin a god? What are your favorite whaler songs to perform? Whalers, boy, let me tell you, cheese and crackers. Hmm. Rastaman Vibration, War, um, Get Up, Stand Up, Exodus. I would say, and Jamming. How many was that? Big I would be, tunes. <laughs> you know, that was like my top ones because. When you say Rastaman vibration, it's positive. It's like him say, if you get up and quarrel every day, you're saying prayers to the devil. It's like you have to really think on that. If you wake up with a screw and you wake up a quarrel, it just make you remember, say, make me check myself and just slow down. Make me restart, reset the morning and deal with the most high so you can bring this under, you know? And the music is the soundtrack to that. That's why I'm in love Bob Marley and the way the music are, as a conduit, him, Ja use him to give you a soundtrack to life, you know, and um, song like War, me love, that is my favorite song because 
The man take the speech of Emperor Haile Selassie I as the voice of many waters to the United Nations in 1963, in October, and put it to music, right? Like when you read the Psalms, if you open the Psalms, it will tell you this is a song to be played on this instrument. This is a song, you're supposed to sing them. But when you read the Psalm, you're like, you know, well, you might think, so, okay, that word don't rhyme and blah, blah, blah. When you listen to war, is poetry in motion and is the word of God. As we say, the voice upon many waters because that speech we went to the United Nations, Bob Marley and Wailer's music carried all into space. So we have to give Ja thanks, you know. And song like Get Up, Stand Up, you know. Anytime I feel weak within myself, this is a true testimony. Anytime me feel weak within myself, I hear Bob, Peter, and Bunny saying to me, don't give up the fight. Don't give up the fight. You know, with whalers and, you know, whalers have three branches right now. And at times we did unite. But one day we go reunite because we're not going to give up the fight. See, we all are fighting for the same thing. And so that is also encouragement for unification because what we represent is oneness. You know, so I say to my fellow whalers in the all way, because I'm in communi communication with most of my brethren and especially the elders of the whalers. You know, they, I thank God to have them in my life to, to, to give me guidance, to learn from, you know. And I'm here to encourage as a young, young man in other struggle, say, don't give up, you know, your work was not in vain. You know, and then jamming, yeah, because this is life. Life is for living. You know, we have to jam in the name of the Lord. We can jam it anyway, but the best jam is the jam in the name of the Lord. See? And Exodus, uh, we're moving. You know, this is not a stagnant thing. We, as, we, as we say as Rasta, forward. Well, we're not even say forward. We say Godward ever, backward never. Cause we move forward and forward and forward and sometimes you tire out because you don't know which part you go. But if you go to God, you got you, <laughs> you know? I love that God word. I love that. That is, I just heard that for the first time, believe it or not. And I, I'm going to choose that. So. I learn something new every single day, Josh. This is my, this is my thing. This is my goal. This is one of my mantras. Learn something new every single day. True. And uh, it's such a huge thing for me. Um, I feel like once you stop learning, you stop living. Um, so Ox. that's that's huge for me. Uh, tell me, tell me about Jamaica's sixtieth. Is it doesn't mean anything for you? Are you, you know, some people it's like oh, who cares, and other people it's like you know, some people care, some people don't. What what does that mean for you as a Jamaican? I will tell you like. It's a time of reflection. We have to look at our beginnings, right? From especially that time period, 1960s, right? Look where Rasta, look at the development of Rasta in that time. Because Rasta up on the scene from before His Majesty crowned as Emperor. I want you to know that. As Rastafari, he had followers here in America, in the diaspora, that when Brother, um, the, who was... Um, Gong, the original Gong, seeing brother, uh, brother Howell, who was one of the first preachers of Rasta, as a seaman, him come to Harlem, to America, and learn about follower, learn about Rastafari, and carry that to Jamaica, seeing from 1930. So from 1960, you had Rasta emerging and growing in Jamaica, taking root and growing where it hadn't grown so um, in other parts, but it really like exploded in Jamaica, right? And you have independence movement. Well, Rasta was a part of that independence movement because uh, Rasta, Jamaica was under the crown of, of England at the time, you know, and in part still is. So in 1960, you know, when Rasta was being persecuted, you had a delegation sent from Jamaica to Ethiopia and to different parts of Africa to speak on the topic of repatriation. Brother Plano, Brother Martin Plano, Jarrest and Soul, Douglas, Brother Douglas Mack, Brother uh, Alvaranga, 
um, and others went to speak to his majesty and tell them, tell his majesty what was happening in Jamaica to grassroots people, not just Rasta, but the grassroots people because Rasta in Jamaica was poor, right? And this is the greatest thing. And you can find this in the scriptures. God came to Jamaica in 1966. Emperor Ali Selassie first visited Jamaica and answered the cry of Rasta. And he celebrated the independence of Jamaica as another nation that fought for liberation. So 60th anniversary for Jamaica is important because I am a part of that heritage. My Jamaican root come, it left Jamaica before independence. That's why I born in Babylon, America. My great grandfather yes. carried my, or he come here and met my great grandfather uh, who was uh, what they call Cherokee. So I have the indigenous root and birth my grandfather. So I am attached to that independence in the sense that now emerging in this time as Rasta to say, where is our independence? You know, where really is our independence? Because not people don't know this, but in the days of Emperor Ali Selassie I, he made Jamaica and Trinidad, the 15th and 16th parish, or uh, 13, uh, 14 and 15th, I believe, or 15th and 16th parish of Ethiopia. So if Jamaica did not go um, fully liberate itself, you know, it's like I have to, I have to say, like Jamaica, did we miss our day of visitation, America? To our people in the diaspora, did we miss our day of visitation? So now we come around and reset the clock, 60 is a new Iowa. We are 12 o'clock again. So we get to decide our destiny, right? You know, Jamaica have to look upon where she is going, where she come from, where she is and where she is going. The fact that a Rastafarian um, princess uh, was dragged by police and trimmed her locks in Jamaica in 20, what was that, 2021, in a country that makes so much money off of tourism through Bob Marley estate and what Bob Marley Crazy. brings to Jamaica. You go on like you love Rasta, but them don't love Rasta. I don't kind of hypocrisy, my bun out. So if Jamaica go rise from which part it then now, if any part of this diaspora who, who we say we're black and we're proud, what are we proud of and we don't accomplish nothing? We still go on with a begging bowl. We still, we're not in power yet. We still look for get free from, from master's hand. So we have to really look upon it. All of us play a part and we've all played into it. So now what are we gonna do now that is 12 o'clock again? We reset the clock. We have a chance now to look upon history and look upon what we've been given. And I must say this too, because this is very important. I don't want your program to get shut off after this, but I just want to say this. The Royal Dynasty of Emperor Haile Selassie I is still here. See, the Royal Crown is still here as a government in exile. For Rasta, we have the Church of Haile Selassie I, which was given to us by His Majesty and through His Son as a legal institution so you can marry, christen your babies, baptize, bury your loved ones in the name of Haile Selassie I, and you don't have to go to the conqueror to, to justify you or to give you rights. And this, this church is in Jamaican parliament. So Jamaica, have a chance. We have everything we need to rise ourselves. But what we are gonna do now, what tools are we gonna use? Don't watch the, 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 the tool and the work you can do, watch the hand that behind it. So I watch in to see, you know, which ones are gonna join this struggle, not watching, not acting, because we are on the back of field for the Lord. And Jamaica was a godly country. Seeing, when you look upon independence, look at the national anthem. When you look upon these things, a God, even Babylon, America, I say one nation under God, but money them choose and call God. So Jamaican independence called Jamaican everywhere, right? Rasta rocked the world. Jamaican rocked the world. Not just Rasta, but Marcus Garvey. You have all kind of minds come from Jamaica. So any which part we there, as African, Ethiopian, 
because Majesty said Jamaican and Ethiopian are blood brethren. It's why Colin Powell and Princess Diana is family. Look and do your history. These things are written. It's not me say it. Look, look. That's why they overthrow Haile Selassie, the first government, because anyhow, Jamaica would say, we're done with the queen. We want Emperor Haile Selassie the first to represent we. The world would have been a different place by now. All right? So make we look upon history and see what we can do for right the wrong. Yes, Josh. Big up. Um, that is the... Uh... The, that is the realest, most prevalent, most, you know, real answer um, that I wasn't expecting, but that it, it's needed. It's so much persecution of Rastafari in Jamaica over the years, and it's just to see things st still need so much work, and it's a jubilee year, 60th year, it's a big year, so I hope that... Um, things can be worked on and pushed into a direction where it should be, where people aren't judged for their hair or culture is not seen in a light that is negative because of some type of stereotype or portrayal. Like you said, they are able to profit off of Bob and look at the legacy he's left um, for Jamaicans you know, in, in our own right. Um, and the global movement that he created that is part that he has partially, you know, created uh, mm. amongst other musicians, of course, and artists um, that is reggae music. That is a global phenomenon um, that I can see. You know, we have 220 countries worldwide tuning in at the com. That speaks for itself. You know, it's a global movement uh reggae music and it's loved all the way from indonesia to brazil i see you guys a lot of brazil flags up in the in the comment section tonight um, yes you know japan germany like we're everywhere you know jamaicans and our music yes. so and it's embraced and loved and and mimicked and redone and you know in so many ways and and honored um, mm. by so many people so yeah bless up everybody that has come before and, and paved the way um, for reggae music and I do hope that Jamaica 60th is gonna bring bigger and brighter things for Jamaica and that we can do something to uh, change the narrative Josh thank you for sharing that um, I think there was another question on Instagram when Roof Life Music as asking Roof, uh, when is New Druda Tribe going to hit? What does that uh, mean? I think, does that mean like new music? Is that the question? Well, I, it's new music. Yes, we have new music we're working on. Um, we're, we're completing our uh, sophomore album, which we hope to release this fall. Yeah. Uh, soon. And we we have some shows coming up too. We'll be in Jamaica, Jawel, September fifteenth through the seventeenth with Canex uh, um, Expo. And um, yeah, like you know, we're here. So if anybody want to hear the message, you know, just send for it. <laughs> you know, we are there. Yeah, sorry, but I had to get up for briefly there. My I have two little miniature pincher dogs and they were ready to go outside so I said I had to quickly get up and run back so if you're wondering what was going on I hope I didn't trip anybody out too much but yeah I have uh two dogs that are a boy and girl that uh <laughs> they're pretty active I'll tell you that but they're they're like Dobermans but they're stuck in small Doberman bodies oh wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> Big up Roots Life Music for the question. Thank you all for joining us tonight. I did yeah. keep Josh a little bit over time. I'm going to try to get through the last few questions really fast. And if you are just tuning in, um, I am going to be playing out the full album if you haven't heard it yet, New Day Dawning. Uh, there's also a, a title track, New Day Dawning, which I was playing, promoting uh, this interview this week uh, for Melody Mondays. I do want to play the track really briefly. I I might play it on the on the outro just because, like I said, Instagram's been 
coming for me when I play music in these interviews. <laughs> but I'm going to play the full album out after the, the show tonight. If so if you guys want to jump off Instagram and onto the radio, you can. And you can listen to the whole New Day Dawning debut album. But if you do, uh, you know, or if you're already on the radio, then you're exactly where you need to be. I will be playing out all the tracks for you guys right after this. But Josh, let me ask you, uh, where, tell me somewhere in the world that you've traveled to that you absolutely loved and why. Hmm. Let me think on that one there. Um, this was, I would have to say, one place that, that always comes to mind is uh frankfurt germany and it's like it reminded me um certain parts of germany like when you get to east berlin it reminded me of brooklyn but being in frankfurt where like that it was like an african hub you know and i remember my brother mingi had a club there club club love you know and just being there and like I, he invited me to perform there and just like the African presence there for me was in, in Europe at that time was a lot because when I first went to Germany, I didn't see no black face, <laughs> you know, different now. And like, or if you say hi to people, it's like, what? you know, like, like, you know, excuse me, you know, how do you get to the subway? You know, you, gotta go, you just got to go straight to the reggae festival. This is what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> They yeah, okay. but, like being in Frankfurt, I just remember like that feeling being in, it was like a, it felt like a secret meeting, but like we were all there and it was all love. And just, you know, I kind of felt that in my travels. And that time I was on tour with Joy Dinalani. So we did some little offshoot thing then. But I just remember like that meeting ones and ones after that from the diaspora was like, it was a it was like you know meeting family on the road yeah so i have to say big up frankfurt massive club love brother mingi you know <laughs> yes big up all the germany massive everybody out there tuning in thank you guys for your support your love and your twitter uh dms all the dms of love thank you guys i read all the messages just so you guys know i appreciate love all of them um, I do have one last question before I let you go, Josh. Tell me something most people don't know about you or would never guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was I class clown. <laughs> yeah, that's thing you might not know, like. At some time, I may come across as very serious because life's serious, you know. I sometimes have a natural screw face. And if you meet me and you see me as screw, don't, I just may be deep in thought. But in high school, I was class clown. Like, I love laughing. I love having a good time, you know. Like, life is for living, you know. I love a joke. And anybody would know me, like, you know, you know me long enough, you'll see like, some, you're gonna say something wrong, that brother there touch, you know? <laughs> but I just, I just love, me love life, you know? Life is for living and we learn that is medicine to the soul, you know? <laughs> yeah, I love that. I would never think that you were like unapproachable or like you were ever giving a screw face. Like you just have <laughs> this vibe about you. It's just this calming vibe for me. You make I, me feel calm and at ease. And yeah, that's exactly where I like to be. So the vibe is good. And thank you so much for joining me tonight and just for reasoning and just speaking about your music and your movements for everybody tuned in. Tell them where they can find you. Are you on Twitter? Are you, are you on Twitter? You didn't catch the Twitter, did you? I, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm never on there. Um, yeah. Facebook, I, YouTube, tell everybody. Yeah. So they can find you, your links. Uh, Facebook, you can find me, Josh David Barrett. Um, I'm on Instagram, uh, Josh David 424. Um, YouTube, look up Judah Tribe. Look up, uh, also, 
if you want to really get to know, we listen to her music. You know, we had, we were blessed to have a Grammy nominated album with the Wailers, you know, a new release after 20 odd years. And you can hear the sound and the message, you know, that we've been working on since Judah Tribe. Um, works with DJ Jamar, song called This Feeling, you know, give you an update of what we're working on. And you'll soon get, uh, you'll soon find a web page. We'll go put all of those things up and yeah. get all up for everyone so you can keep the link. But it's me run those social media. So if you message me, I'm me I talk to. It's not a machine. So Yes, that's good to know. You know, people want to know, is it, is it you? Is it your team? Or is it, you know, some sort of... Uh... There's a lot of there's a lot of software now. <laughs> there's a lot of software. True AI. <laughs> These dogs are going crazy. I think they want to walk. Josh, I love, I love, I love you. Thank you so much for love talking you. with me tonight. We will be in touch. You got to send me all the new music, all the events coming up. I want tag me so I can reshare and so everybody knows your movements. If you guys aren't following Josh already, go follow him. Make sure you're up to date on everything. Judah Tribe. All right. Yeah. And bless up everybody for tuning in. I bless up all the reggae masses worldwide. Thank you so much, Josh. Bless your love. Thanks for having me. Have a great night. All right. Cool.